first question you get is, oh, what's the range? Oh, where am I going to charge? You go, well, what do you use your car for? Um, well, I run around town. Why would you ever go to a servo? Just go home I, and pl plug the thing in. I smile every time I'm driving past these places now. I'm just sort of like, yeah. What if you want a servo pie? <laughs> yeah, now I gotcha. Yeah, fair point. It's better for the environment and better for my health. Yeah, not to get a servo yeah. pie. Yeah. Sometimes when you're working on a big project, you need a bit of inspiration to keep at it. So I thought I'd pop down to see the guys, Nick and Shane, at Electro Gusto, who've recently completed an EV conversion, so I can learn a few things and go for a drive and get re-inspired. Now, even though I'm a Porsche fan, old V-dubs are not really my thing. I have owned a couple of Volkswagen powered cars, and I have to say I was never inspired by the classic flat four VW motor, even when we hotted them up, especially when compared to its descendant, the gorgeous Porsche flat six. Now, a little known fact, I heard that Hitler commissioned Ferdy Porsche to design the original Beetle to be a washing machine, but they could never cure the dreadful vibration and it walked all around the laundry, so they put wheels on it and made it a car instead. I'm not sure if that's exactly true. Maybe you can let me know in the comments after you've subscribed and liked the video. But I digress. Now Nick is a big fan of the Fastback VWs and he's done a beautiful job electrifying this two-door Volkswagen Type 3 Squareback. A lot of attention to detail and I doubt I'll get close to this production standard with my own Porsche conversion. I'll probably get nowhere near it, but anyway. But I want to see how it drives. This will be the first classic EV conversion I've been in. Righto, Nick, welcome to Incarnation. <laughs> we made it. Hey Stu, how are you? I'm mate, I'm great. I'm riding in an electric car again. I was in an MG4 last week. Wait till you see the review of that. Really nice good one. car. Rear wheel drive. Nice. Fully electric. Nice. Not as pretty as this though. No, no, you're right. Colour. What year is this one? Uh, this is a 1973 Volkswagen Squarebacks. So why did you choose this car to electrify? I've always loved um, wagons. Um, I love two-door wagons, mm. particularly. I just think there's a beautiful design aesthetic. Volkswagens are great to convert, sort of the older Volkswagens. Um, as you probably know, we put a net gain Hyper 9 motor um, through the original gearbox. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's a proven concept. There's been lots of Beetles, there's yep. been lots of Combis, been lots of people around the world that have um, converted Volkswagens. So a really good car for your first car to sort of, to electrify. Okay, so it's conventional gearbox at the back, conventional differential. Yes. You've just pulled out the V-dub motor and, and put in a one of the inline. Yes, so, it's so it makes it a little bit easier to convert because you're going through the gearbox opposed to sort of direct drive or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You drive this car um, like it is an automatic because we've got our three button um, gear selector there. You can choose drive uh, or reverse. If you wanted to as well, you can um, change gears, which yep. will just give you a lot more um, torque. But yeah, like yeah. we're in um, third now, and you know, you, you can see that it's got enough. That pulls much, much enough. better than the original one did. Oh. Yes, and then you don't have all that uh, smoky, uh, actually... noisy, dak, dak, dak. My first thought when you took off then, <laughs> I was reminded of my old Beetle. Oh, yes. I, I was thinking straight away, how are we going to stop? Yes. I, was, I was already back on my, my drum brakes right, again. Yeah, you were, and, you were throwing going, your foot forward as a passenger. I was thinking, in a, in a yeah. normal car, normal, I wouldn't be concerned, but in this thing, I was suddenly going, shoot, I hope he's upgraded the brakes because yeah. it's, it's going pretty well. But we've um, restored everything. So these, these cars have got disc brakes in the front and drums in the back. So yeah. they've actually got great brakes. And have you got regen happening as well? Yes, so we've got regen. Uh, I've got a switch here so that I can throw that in. Now you can oh, yeah. sort of feel uh, that regen. Yeah, no stuff. Um, yeah. There's two, two um, settings. So you've got a little bit of regen and then a lot of regen. Okay. Um, so again, it's sort of really great because you can just, as you can see, I've just taken my foot off the accelerator. It sort of it acts like a an automatic. Yep. It accelerates harder than I thought it would. Yeah. Of that that hyper nine motor, I and wasn't really expecting in, a lot. That's in third. So if we put it in second, we might do yep. that a little bit later. <gasps> um. I don't. I don't know. If, I might be a bit scared. <laughs> so amazing sitting here. The car's running, obviously, and it's silent, you know, for an old car. And the other thing about doing these old cars up is I just heard a little knock under there, which is, I realised, is the fire extinguisher that's not bolted down yet. Oh, OK. Um, so if you hear a little clunk, that's what that is. But yep. every little squeak yep. um, 
yeah. you know, you you hear now. Like in an old yeah. car, you... It's, it's masked by the... Dak, 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 yeah, dak, you, dak, don't, dak, dak. you don't hear anything because of the, yeah. the, the engine noise. So that's yeah. another thing about doing up these cars is, you know, we've had to chase down a lot of that stuff. And this one's for sale? This is for sale, yeah. So it's... Um, here we go, here comes the ad. <laughs> been two years in the making. Yeah. Um, and back to bare metal, resprayed, um, new leather interior and cloth interior, yep. new headliner, new steering wheel, new new windscreen, new glass, new bumpers, new tires, it's new a everything. New car. It's new. It's and I think that you know for us this is you know we're building our brand and we need a product that sort of proves that we're you know in, interested in design and and safety and quality craftsmanship so this is our first show car yep. now we're doing client cars which is fantastic mm -hmm. i like it. it it does remind me of beetles of old you can't get away from the fact that it's it's a 50 year old volkswagen yeah um the seats i'm the way you fall off the front of them as yes. well is <laughs> yeah is classic um so we've hidden all our tech so i've got a button here that i push here um which opens up Woo. our automatically opens up our glove box. So we've hidden, we've 3D printed a, an insert oh, wow. in there. That's super neat. Um, and then, you know, I can just hit that now and, and, and close <laughs> that uh, back up. That's clever. It is an old car and I love it. And I love the idea that, that people get in this car and they don't know it's electric. Oh, really? uh, and you don't tell them. Um, and then you take off and there's, you just see that moment when it comes across their eyes. So we decided not to make this all, you know, big tech screen yeah, and all yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. I love the fact that it, it feels like an old car. Yeah. Um, You're a resto modder. Yes, t totally. Which, and I think that we are, you know, we are resto modders and sometimes I use the term, you know, we're modern day hot rodders. Technology to make things run better, go faster. Mm. Um, the hot rodders were always about the look of something as well, an aesthetic. Uh, and I think it's that lovely mashup. I've always loved form and function working together. Yep. Making it faster or electrifying it or making it simpler or making it better for the environment. I think that that's, you know, modern, modern day hot rodding. It's very stylish. But the Pasha interior as well, if you call it, the houndstooth is, yes. is really sexy. Well, I've always loved those 70s Porsches and that era, like your 928s, you know, extraordinary yep. interiors and yeah. brave decisions, but it's so cool. Yeah. And the colours of the day as well. I'm sure well, you it's know. Oratium. It's called Oratium Green, which okay. I think was an old Porsche colour. A yeah, very 70s um, colour. Yeah. yeah. So Along with the browns and tans and oranges total. and, and yeah. like lemon yellows and things yeah. they did. Uh, range in a car like this isn't really relevant because it's a, it's an event car you take for drive on a Sunday. Yes. But you're not really worried dinner, if it's... Cruise around or drive to work if you sort of live in the inner city and you don't drive too much. How big's the battery? Um, the battery is about 32 kilowatt hours. We've got five of the Tesla 6.2 uh, kilowatt batteries, so okay. they're the bigger bigger Tesla batteries that we got our hands on. And whereabouts are um, they in the car, physically? Uh, so for weight distribution, we've got three in the front, two in the back. Um, okay. I met a gentleman at a car meet once. He told me that his father had one of these, and his father used to put a bag of cement in the front. Oh, yeah. Um, to, to sort of improve to get, the handling. To get some grip. For me, it feels um, nicely balanced. And we have to do that for sort of engineering approvals and yep. all that sort you of stuff. You take a lot of weight out and you put it back in again. Yeah, you do. You do. It'd be the same story with the 928. Yeah. Electric cars, okay, all you need is a battery and electric motor. But there are, And Shane says, oh, it's really simple. It's, but there's an awful lot more than that. You, there's a whole lot of control systems. You need cool, uh, cooling for the battery and cooling for the motor. And, and you've got to think about air conditioning and battery control and inverters and, and DC to DC converters. And, I think that on our sort of price list or our quote thing is over a hundred parts um, that we put into a car. It's funny because I often think about how complex it is but also how simple it is. But it's all of the other small um, safety components and inertia yep. switches and chargers and fuses and DC to DCs and high voltage wiring 
um, you know, remaking this 12 volt heater system. You know, used to run off the the heat of the of the yep. car. Yeah. Now it's electric, so we have to 3D print. We have to design and 3D print parts to hook it back into the original yep. the emitter and all that sort of stuff. It takes days and days and days. Yep. It's yep. sort of stuff that we can't really charge. Uh, customers for but it needs to be done it needs to be done so really complex in problem solving too like we're doing a 356 tribute Porsche at the moment we're down to like millimeters of space yep. of how do we fit a battery box in yeah but not even fit it in how do we actually install it you know how do we get it in into the vehicle with the batteries in it then be able to mount it then get access to quick connect, high voltage cables, and all those sorts of things. So I've always loved um, problem solving. So that's a lot of the time the work is, you know, and like again with your 928, mm. um, exciting challenges. The big things are sort of relatively easy. Like we need to mount the motor here, we need to make motor mounts, we need to put some batteries in. Yep. It's all the little things like, well, yep. how do we route the high voltage cable? Yep. Where does, the power you know, steering, where are we gonna, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Power where steering, air conditioning, heating. Yeah. Uh, the instruments, the old analog instruments, how do you map all your yeah. digital signals yes. to go back to, uh, yeah. Here we go. And we're in third gear at the moment. Yeah. So it's no, you obviously don't need the clutch because there's no stalling or thing like yeah. this. And away we go. It's quite brisk. You could have taken off in first and changed gear and had yeah, the whole. Yeah. Well, if we go into second now, um, so I'm in second now. You can have that old-fashioned. Oh yeah. yeah. Jeez. The way these seats are when you break and you fall off the front of the seat. <laughs> yes. It's it so actually, weird it's now putting it into third and taking my foot off the clutch and, and, and we, not thinking we're going to stall. Yeah, yeah. You know, even though the yeah. motor's going. Okay. So um, you can have the, the whole, if you want to change gears and stuff, you really can. Yeah. Even though you don't need to. So So you sort of saw then it was pretty quick. It sort yeah. of pushed you back a little it, bit it in your did. seat. Um, it did. It, it launched. If we wanted to put it in first, you'd probably smoke the tyres. Yeah. Um, well, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> And look, if, if we're on a freeway, we might put it in fourth to get uh, better efficiency yep. out of our battery pack. Um, now, I'm not considering doing that for the 928, retaining the gearbox and diff, because firstly, the design of the Tesla gearbox um, yes. and motor and diff is so compatible with the design of the back of the car. Yes, it is. And that works really well. It's a but also, also the weight, you know, the yes. whole torque tube gearbox diff. I just want yes. to lose as much weight as I can because I'm going to be replacing that with batteries. Yes. But we've actually taken the reverse gear out of this gearbox. Oh, we yeah. restored the gearbox, which, you know, at oh, great, yeah. great expense. And we actually took the, the reverse cog out just in case someone went yeah. into, you know, muscle memory and threw yep. it into reverse. reverse and then... Um, you know, it's one and of those. Then, and then press reverse on there and went forward and, yes. and got totally yes. confused. So, and, well, actually, you'd get the best acceleration. Make a positive. Because reverse gear is generally geared lower than first, if you put it in reverse and then selected reverse on the electric motor, it actually give you the most powerful takeoff in a forward direction. It probably would. But let's it not. Probably would. We won't go there. No. Okay, so it's for sale. So the big question is, how much? Do you have an idea? Do yeah, want... I do have an idea. And look, um, of course, whenever whenever you're talking about price, you sort of preface it with you know the amount of hours that we've put into this car. Mm. Two years' work. We're selling it for 150. And yeah. so that's all registered, ready to go, uh, 12 months warranty. Of course, we'll always look after our customers yeah. if anything goes wrong past that. Um, but that's, you know, that's the price of the car. That's a full bare metal respray. That's a leather interior with German weave carpet, new headliners. It's, it's not cheap. We know some people who are selling, you know, um, done up Land Rovers for a quarter of a million. Yeah. So we're not sort of alone in that space. No. Um, but for us, the components are very expensive. You yeah. know, it's that's not us making a lot of money. Mate, if you go to Cars and Coffee and look at the cars there and ask people, how much do you spend on restoring that? You know, it, it's yes. it, it'll be a six-figure number for yes. so many cars. We're going through the heart of Newtown here. Yeah, where all the cool kids it's a, are. It's a real city experience today. All right, let's go back to the workshop. Okay. <laughs> there's, there's somebody. We got, a, we got a thumbs up. It's always, from, it's always good to get a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> They're asking us to go. All right. Thank you. They were very enthusiastic. My kids the, hate going in the car with 
cars with me because yeah. you always get people smiling and pointing and waving and um, they don't like the attention but um, they were a couple of homeless guys though uh, yeah they but, were but, but they, they still were. liked it they were we made their day their we, we, they, we got a double hand clap yeah we did now that is you know that is one of the beautiful things about classic cars is it just brings something to your life you know it's it's got a soul it's something that's beautiful it makes you happy yeah and you know and car people are a really diverse mob you know there doesn't matter how wealthy you are race sexuality to this some people this is going to be anathema they're going to be you you heathen you should have left <laughs> it standard and you go well maybe and other people are just going to go it's fantastic no it's really nice mate thanks right. for taking us out which I want to be a lot faster and than this, although <laughs> mate, no type three has ever gone like that. Up a hill. And that's third, not second. Don't do that again. <laughs> so you were talking about your nine to eight yeah. and learning and the journey that you're on. There's so much to do. Getting rid of all the petrol bits for a start. People want to buy some of the motor gearbox talk tube, all that stuff for sale. Yep. We've got to, the trouble is I've got to spend quite a bit of money just restoring all the suspension and brakes, yep. which you need anyway. Yes. That's okay, it's worth the investment because the drivetrain's gonna last forever on that car. Yes. So it's gonna need all the suspension and stuff to be yes. tight as a drum. Yep, yep. And now's the time, and that's one of the learnings. I'll fix those wheel bearings later. Yeah. You know, it's all right, it rolls, and I'll fix the this no. later, and I think it's, in doing electric cars, getting all that stuff done before you even approach the electrification. Yep. And we're doing, you know, we're doing a, a 1940s Fiat Topolino at the moment and a, and a Citroen HY van. Mm. And they're both in that camp. Brake disc upgrades, yep. strengthened chassis, brand new rear ends, front ends, all that stuff that we're doing to those cars. All we really want to do is get electric and drive it around and go woohoo, but you know, having to do all that sort of stuff before you even start it can be frustrating, but it's it's so important to have that perfect. How's your ch level of charge at the moment? Let's see, oh we're, well, yeah, we're it's hardly moved. Hardly moved. It was full beforehand, and so it's AC charging only on this car, I guess. Yes. No, no super fast DC, no. so you can't drive it to Newcastle and stop it. No, sadly do, not. No, you don't care. Plug no. it in overnight. Totally. Go. Job done. Plenty of load space too. Yeah. We haven't lost too much of that. All right. Well, thanks for watching Incarnation today, everybody. This is Nick from Electro Gusto. Is that how you say it? Electro Gusto or Gusto? However you would like to say it. Okay. Both, both are correct. Give us a call if you want to buy yourself a Type 3 1973 electric Volkswagen. Or talk about electrifying your current classic that's got a, a wonky motor and drivetrain. Exactly. Mm. Thanks, Stu. Pleasure's been all mine. <laughs> But this car's brought home a few things to me. Even with a conversion as good as this, certain original characteristics of the car can't change. What you're doing is bringing some modern characteristics that are great, notably the strong acceleration, the quietness, much grippier tires of course, the big upgraded disc brakes, that's good. And a lot of the original good features are retained. The excellent vision, thanks to the small pillars, the big luggage space. But you can't get away from the original aspects that are not so good. The original shaped seats, beautifully restored, give no lumber or back support and you fall off the front under brakes. And of course in a fast moving world full of V8 Land Cruisers and dual cab utes everywhere towering above you and you're missing any active safety features like ABS, front and side airbags, crumple zones, so while it would be a totally practical and economical daily driver, you're going to feel a bit vulnerable. And if you do drive it every day, you're going to notice the absence of luxuries like air conditioning that we take for granted now. And that, of course, was never on the original vehicle anyway. Such is the joy of owning a classic old car, regardless of whether it's petrol or electric. So there you are. What have I learned from my experience for my own Porsche 928 EV conversion? Firstly, that I have to pay a lot of attention to squeaks and rattles from the suspension. All those noises that you didn't hear because the original petrol motor covered them up. And with my car starting as such a basket case, I do need to fix a lot of standard Porsche suspension bits. Secondly, if you're going down the EV route, you don't actually need a huge electric motor to get strong acceleration around town. Now, I'm not building an autobahn car. I know from my own interstate trips in all my 928s 
that fast highway stuff is the strength and joy of the Porsche 928. But I also know that burgling around town is still practical, but the V8 is very thirsty, and to be honest, it's not that quick off the mark by modern standards. No, what I want is a daily driver for city driving, which is the majority of what I do. It doesn't need to be fast above 200 k's an hour. It doesn't even need to go 150 k's an hour. I want a road car for road speeds. So now I am re-inspired. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Shane, for showing me the Type 3. Oh, hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please share it with your motoring friends. And above all, click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out, hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.